Okay, so what we were just reading from is a tablet entitled Atrahasis. Atrahasis is a name. It means he who is wise or wise one. You're going to know it as it breaks down to another name, Noah. We're understanding and seeing the evidence that is saying that not all of the Hebrew records are unique to their history. Well, in fact, it's quite the contrary. We can understand that some of these records are actually adopted, borrowed from more ancient, older traditions, mythologies, civilizations. One of them being the flood record, that it is not unique to the Hebrew perspective or the Hebrew history. Just going to say that about that. So the writings that we're seeing here are predating the flood account, and we're finding out some of these other cycles before the flood where these gods were trying to destroy mankind. So you should understand now perfectly that the Bible is actually a composition of many ancient works. And now they're teaching all you guys to go around and, you know, say that the Bible is written by the Vatican or the Bible is, you know, written by the Illuminati or the Bible is just a joke and it's written to deceive everybody. When in all actuality, if you know how to read the Bible, it's a wonderful book because it's one of the places one of the only places that you're going to find as I said these records before the flood and of course I'm showing you incredible information out the Bible that many people had no idea was there and we're revealing this ancient history of course that you know our world is not telling us that they're denying from us but yet it's right here in the Bible if you can understand it the only thing that you really need to understand to make the Bible readable for you and to where you can extract the truth the true truth out of it is to realize that they have condensed the Bible in such a way to where the entire historical record is pre presented from one perspective, meaning one God is causing all of this action in the Bible, when in reality it is many lesser gods that are representing the persona of two separate deities. One would be the fallen prince of this world, who is really who the fallen sons of God are aspiring to, and the other would be that of Jesus Christ, the spirit of truth, in which the faithful sons of God are, of course, keeping the faith in, and that they are trying to still uphold the conditions on this world that they were originally sent here to perform. And then the fallen sons of God fight against them throughout the entire ancient history. And then this is where we get many of these ancient destructions of these very ancient high cultures, which nobody can figure out. Well, some of these cultures were not even the cultures of mankind. It was the cultures of the sons of God. And that the fallen sons of God had actually warred and destroyed with high weapons the other civilizations of the faithful sons of God. So just understand that. And that's a way to begin to crack this egg of archaeology, get through some of the enigma. Well, what I want to show you is that in Leviticus, we're going to find a match for what we're seeing here in Atrahasis. And I want you to see the basic theme is the cyclic destruction of mankind through various methods. And we're going to see in this technique, in this method, we're going to see two things come out that are very prominent. I'm going to read it right here. Let vegetation be too scant for their stomachs. Let the field decrease its yield. Now, watch this over here. When the sixth year arrived, they served up a daughter for a meal, served up a son for food. So it's getting so bad, they're eating their sons and daughters. And then they've got no, fee they've got no food. The land is decreasing its yield, all by plan, all by design. Let's look here at Leviticus to show you that these ancient records, Babylonian, Sumerian, are enlaced into the Bible. Let's see here. This is going to be Leviticus chapter 26. I'm going to start reading here at verse 20. And your strength shall be spent in vain, for your land shall not yield her increase, neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits. And then, of course, we understood what we just read. Let vegetation be too scant for their stomachs. Let the field decrease its yield. Now let's go ahead and read this one real quick if we've got time here. They served up a daughter for a meal, served up a son for food. Well, let's look at this right here. And you shall eat the flesh of your sons. I'll be back. 